Today we're going to quantitatively test if moving averages work as support and resistance. The basic theory is when the price is above a moving average, it is considered to be in an uptrend, and the moving average serves as support. And when the price is below a moving average, it's considered to be in a downtrend, with the moving average serving as resistance. This idea is commonly seen on various technical analysis resources, but I've never seen anything more than anecdotal evidence. In this video, I'll show you a method to systematically test the validity of any support or resistance line. We'll find out if moving averages actually function as support and resistance, and if they do, which length of moving average is the best. If moving averages serve as support and resistance, we would expect to see the price bounce off of them a significant portion of the time when approached. Let's see how we can test this. Here's a plot with the closing price, a moving average, and two bands. The two bands are the moving average plus and minus 0.5 times the current average true range. Currently, the price is above the moving average, so we classify it as an uptrend. As the price unfolds, it finds itself between the two bands. If the price moves back up, outside of the bands, we will classify this as a bounce. If the price continues down and moves outside of the bands, we will classify this as a penetration. In this scenario, the price moves back up, and this is what we call a bounce. Here's another example. This time, the closing price spends a few bars in between the bands. We will not classify the moving average interaction as a bounce or penetration until it leaves the bands. In this scenario, it's a penetration. Similarly, when the price is in a downtrend or below the moving average, we do the opposite. When the price moves up between the bands, we wait until it leaves. If it leaves to the top, it's a penetration. And if it leaves through the bottom, it's a bounce. In this case, it's a bounce. In this scenario of a large price move that goes from above the upper bands to the lower bands, we will classify this as a penetration right away. Here's a plot of hourly Bitcoin data with the support bounces marked with a green line and the support penetrations marked with a yellow line. The moving average period is 72 and the average true range period is 200. Just by looking, we can see bounces tend to happen many times in a row. This method is not perfect, as the price sometimes just barely qualifies as a penetration before reverting. We could adjust the ATR multiple, but that would just create issues somewhere else. Anyways, with Bitcoin Tether data from January 2018 to the start of 2023, we observed 535 support bounces and 332 support penetrations. In total, there was 867 moving averages support interactions. Of those, 61.7% of them were bounces. I'm going to call this the support bounce percentage. I chose 72 at random, so let's look at the bounce percentage across a range of moving averages. Here's the support bounce percentage for moving averages with periods from 24 to 200. The optimal period was 145 with a bounce percentage of 64%, and periods around 70 appear to perform well compared to neighboring period values. The worst period was 36 with a bounce percentage of 56%. Here are the resistance bounce percentages. The optimal period was 195 with a bounce percentage of 65%, with 70 again deserving an honorable mention. The worst period was 32 with a bounce percentage of 54%. Here's the combined bounce percentage, including both support and resistance bounces. The optimal was 200, but 70 and 145 is quite high as well. The higher the period of a moving average, the less time the price interacts with it. So while lower periods generally score a lower bounce percentage, they do have a larger number of total bounces. We found an optimal bounce percentage of 64% with the moving average period of 200. But is this percentage actually significant or just an overfit number resulting from excessive optimization? We're going to verify these results using a Monte Carlo permutation test. Our theory is that traders view moving averages as support and resistance, creating a force in the market that causes the price to bounce off of these averages as it approaches them. But another force in the market is noise, and noise could also cause the price to bounce off a moving average. So our null hypothesis is that the optimal bounce percentage we found is due to noise. We will use our Monte Carlo test to attempt to disprove this null hypothesis. This is the log price of Bitcoin during the test period we used. Theoretically, traders were watching moving averages of this series. If we shuffle the log price changes and take the cumulative sum of the shuffled changes, we get a random alternative price path, a permutation of the actual path. In this permutation, we know there isn't anybody watching moving averages. Any real force that causes price to bounce off moving averages is destroyed. 
but the force of noise remains. So if we calculate the optimal bounce percentage on this permuted price path, and the percentage is lower than the percentage we found on the actual price path, then that would serve as evidence that our actual optimal bounce percentage is not from noise. That is, evidence that our null hypothesis is false. The more times we repeat this process, the more evidence we gain. If we divide the number of times a random permutation's optimal bounce percentage was greater than the actual bounce percentage, we get a p-value giving the confidence that our null hypothesis is false. I generated 1000 price paths and found the optimal bounce percentage for each of them. Here's a histogram of the optimal bounce percentage found on the 1000 permutations. The actual optimal bounce percentage of 64 is marked with a red line. The optimal on the real price data is way ahead of any permeated price data. Not a single permutation came even close. We can see that the luckiest permutations, that is the ones with the highest optimal bounce percentages, scored about 54%, which is worse than every moving average period on the real price series. I'm very confident saying that the price bouncing off of moving averages is not an artifact of noise, it appears to be a real force in the market. The higher performing periods for Bitcoin are 70, 145, and 200 on an hourly time frame. I'm quite impressed by these results. When I set out to make this video, I thought I was going to be disproving the validity of the moving average as support and resistance, but I was wrong. I also tested this on Ethereum and many other cryptocurrencies and found the same results, although some currencies were slightly weaker. The method I used for counting bounces and penetrations and the bounce penetration terminology comes from the 2000 paper Support for Resistance, Technical Analysis, and Intraday Exchange Rates. This paper does the analysis for support and resistance levels published by firms. It's worth a read if you're interested in quantitative technical analysis. That's all I have for this one. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, comment. Goodbye.